Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so excited to have you here today, but before we get started, be sure to check out my website, corinneblackstone.com. You can sign up for my free monthly newsletter, check out all my free SVGs, as well as blogs and other great resources to help you in your crafting journey. In today's video, we are going to do the DTF sublimation hack. Now, this is a really fun way to use sublimation on full cotton shirts, blended shirts, or really just any shirt that you want to if you don't want to do sublimation. What you're going to need is just a few supplies. It really doesn't take a ton, but you're going to need a sublimation printer. I use an Epson ST4000, which is one of their super tank models, but you can use a sawgrass, any of the Epsons that you maybe have converted, but it must be sublimation ink. Then you're going to need some transfer sheets. So they're kind of like a clear, they almost look matte on one side, and typically shiny on the other. I'll link everything down below so you can find exactly what you need to do this. But you're going to need a set of these, they're DTF transfer sheets. And then you're going to need the powder that comes with this. So this one is the Ghidorah uh, transfer powder. This is for DTF and DTG printing. This is a huge bottle. It was a little pricey. It was around like $28 but it lasts forever. So I'm not super concerned about the price because I think the price for the amount that you get is really good. And then I just recommend having like a little spoon or a scooper to use with your um, powder. And then a piece of car copy paper or leftover cardstock or copy paper or sublimation paper, some sort of paper, because I found that my printer had a little bit of trouble grabbing the paper. So I'm gonna show you how I set it up so that it would work with some sublimation paper. And then you're just gonna need a heat press. You don't need to cut these, you don't need to do anything really crazy with them. Oh, and one other thing is you're gonna want some sort of like a tub that can fit your sheet in it. So you wanna be able to fit your entire transfer sheet in like a plastic tub or something because the powder, you don't wanna get it everywhere and you can save any powder that doesn't stick to the design. I'm gonna show you how to make this cute shirt here super easy. I'll link the design down below because this one's really cute. It says, that's enough today or adulting maybe? That's enough today for today. So I know what it says, I swear. But we're gonna go ahead and try out this hack and see what we think. So let's go ahead and get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. We're gonna print our sublimation design from Inkscape. It's just a lot easier. You get better color. And honestly, don't be intimidated by Inkscape. It's pretty simple. And especially if you're just printing, it's even easier. So what I'm gonna do first is I always just double check my document size. And to do that, you're gonna go to File, Document Properties, and you wanna make sure that it's set to US letter. Then you can just close this. Once you've done that, you can import the design that you want to use. So what you can do is go to File, and then choose Import, and you can either Go to quick access if you've just downloaded it. A lot of times your images will be right here. But if not, you can just go into the folder you saved it in. And then I like to ju just do date modified because that helps me find it a lot quicker than having to scroll through and try to remember what it was called. Because I'm going to use the funny sublimation bundle. And then I'm just going to open this and find the image that I want to use. And the one I want to use is that's enough uh, todaying for today. Double click on that and it'll open up. It's gonna ask you just some questions. You don't have to do anything here. Just click OK. Now it might open really big. It just kind of depends on the image and how it's set up. So this one obviously opened really, really large. So what you'll wanna do to resize it, and I find this to be really easy, is up here at the top. It's very similar to Design Space. There's a little lock button and you wanna make sure that it's locked. Then over here, it's usually defaulted to millimeters, but I always change it to inches. Just makes it so much easier. Now we're using an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So I'm gonna make this about, let's go 8.2 inches wide, and it will size it down. Now we may need to size it a little bit more because it is still kind of big for our page, but we can kind of play with it and just see if it looks like it will fit. That looks pretty good, but the other problem that we have to remember is that we're actually using an A4 size sheet, but for the printer to recognize the sheet that we're using, we have to tape it to another piece of paper, making it an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So an A4 sheet of paper is 8.3 8 inches by 11.7, so it's longer, but not as wide. So I definitely wanna change the width down here a little bit. 
because that's going to be just really, really close to the edge and we don't want to do that. So let's just go with an eight inch and that should be just fine. Now I do want to try to fairly center this on the paper. It should be okay um, where it is. You may need to really just adjust where it's sitting on the paper for it to work. Now, because we're doing this just like we do sublimation, you're gonna need to mirror your image, which you can do in your print settings, or I prefer to actually do it before I even click print. If you select your design and go up here to the top, you'll see these two triangles, and it says flip selected object horizontally. If you click on that, it automatically mirrors your image so that you don't have to remember to do it when you're going to print it. Now, that's pretty simple to set up. All we had to do was get it ready to print. So all we have to do now is click on file and then choose print. Now you'll want to make sure that you have your correct printer selected. I have a converted Epson ST4000, which is a super tank. I love my printer. It's great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to preferences. Under preferences, we want to change a few of the settings. So one thing that I've noticed with my printer personally is with these transparency films for the DTF, if I change it to high, it puts too much ink out. So I don't like to change it to high. I'd use standard vivid. Standard vivid just gives it a little bit more, but not like overly dumping the ink onto it. Because you'll notice that you won't want to touch your image once it's printed because it stays wet until we put the powder on top of it. Then what I want to do is make sure color is selected right under where it has the quality. And I typically will leave my paper as plain paper, bright white paper, but you can try some different settings and see if your printer likes of setting better. I've discovered that it really depends on the printer and somewhat the image as well as to what setting it really likes more than others. Then what I want to do is I'm going to go to more options and I want to turn off my high speed print. Turning off high speed print is going to just make sure that you get a better quality print when printing because it's gonna slow down that print head so you're not gonna have a bunch of lines in it. That's really all you have to do. Um, with my printer though, I do change the color correction over to custom. I go to advanced and then I change my color mode from Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB and make sure that the gamma is at 2.2. Again, this can be really different depending on your printer, your ink. So it's really something that you'll need to play with and just kind of get an idea of what works best for yours. But these are the settings that work for mine. So it's always a great starting point, but you'll definitely want to play around with it a little bit. Then all I simply need to do is click OK. Then I want to click OK again, and I'm going to print. Now before I hit print, I'm going to show you how I set up my paper so that it actually feeds through my printer. What I've noticed is my printer really can't tell that there's a clear sheet of paper in there because it is a tray feed. I find that the gravity feed is a little bit better for this, but I did find a way around this with the tray feed. We need to set up our paper to go through our printer because this is clear and this is um, a really nice product. I liked it. I will link it below what I used, but my issue with it is that my printer couldn't tell that it was there. So what you're going to notice is that you have two sides to this one. You have a shiny side and a matte side. You want to print on the matte side of the paper. So when you set it down onto this and actually attach them, you need to make sure that you attach it matte side up. And the reason we're attaching it is because otherwise my printer wasn't pulling it through. So I'm just using a piece of scrap, like sublimation paper. This is just one that went through my printer and I just never bothered to put back in, but you can just use copy paper as well. Now they did include some strips of tape that they recommended just putting on the end of the paper, but it didn't work. My printer still didn't like it. So what I did that really worked super well is I took my transfer sheet, so my DTF transfer sheet, I laid it on to my paper. Then depending on where your design is gonna sit, so if you have a really wide design, tape aside. If you have a really skinny design, then you can tape the top. So all I did is I put a little bit of tape just across the top, turned it over, and then all I wanna do is fold this tape over onto itself, like onto the back of the paper. Now, if you have a little overhang, you may need to trim that off if you didn't quite measure it just right. I found that if I just folded it, my printer didn't care, but now it'll be able to tell that your image is, like your paper's in there. My printer, when you put it, you need to put it 
printing side down, which, so you want to put it with the paper up. It's going to depend on which direction your printer prints as to which way you need to do this. But you can see here that I've got the tape just folded up there at the top. So for this next step, you're going to need a couple of things, some sort of container to like hold your paper in. You're going to need the transfer powder, this is DTF and DTG printing powder. I'll link everything that I bought on Amazon down below. And then a little scooper is super helpful. Now I'm just using an extra 12 by 12 cardstock box that I have because I can't find the Tupperware that this would fit in. But this worked actually really, really well because it's really just to contain the powder so that it doesn't get everywhere. Um, it'll probably get a little messier with this one than it did with my tester just because this image goes all the way to the edge. But it's really, it's not too bad. So the first thing that I like to do is I'm gonna take the piece of paper off that we taped to the back of our design and I'm just gonna remove that. Now I do have some ink that got kind of messy up here. I'm just gonna kind of wipe that off with my finger and it should come off pretty well, but it's probably still gonna end up on our shirt. I'm not super concerned about it. Um, we're still kind of playing with it and figuring out exactly the best settings. So it's really just a matter of playing with it and figuring out what works. So what you'll see is a white powder and it kind of feels sandy, almost maybe like salt or sugar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scooper and I'm just gonna scoop some out and you just wanna shake it around onto your design. Now you can put it on heavy or light. I've noticed it kind of doesn't matter. Um, I like to put a little bit of a heavier setting on this and then I just kind of make sure that I get it as mostly covered as I can. Because now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your powder and your paper and you wanna make sure that the powder gets on all the parts of your design. So like there's some leaves up here at the top I can see that don't have any powder on them so I'm just gonna make sure that I shake some powder that way. I'm gonna shake some powder in all the different directions and then what you do is tap it off onto your plastic container. And you wanna make sure that you don't touch this at all like where the printing is. That's really important and I totally just got some more on there. So put this off to the side and then this you can either Put right back into your container or you can just leave it in your box whatever you want to do i'm going to go ahead and put it back in my container so i'm just going to tap it all into the corner best i can and then just put it back into my jar anything that doesn't stick to your um, container or your image is completely fine to put back in and reuse now i do have some dog hair in there but it'll be fine i'm not really worried about it it'll be okay make sure to put the lid back on this now we're going to set our heat press at 285 and then I'm going to show you the next step because you do need to do some setting of the powder and I'll show you how to do that. One of the first things that I want you to notice is that I've removed my Teflon sheet. Per testing from me, I did find that removing this Teflon sheet made a huge difference because we have to actually activate everything with the heat and for some reason the Teflon just wasn't allowing that to happen. So what you need to do is take your heat press and you need to hover it over your design. Now I will say that a swing away or an easy press is probably gonna be a lot easier, even the auto press for this portion because we need to kind of activate it, but don't touch it. You don't want it to touch your heat press at all. You just need to have your heat press closer to it. And you'll see why here in just a moment or two. It does take a little bit of time. I am just sort of kind of looking at it right now. I'm gonna turn it a little bit. And what I want to do is I'm getting right down so I can kind of see that the press is not touching it. I'm just getting all the way down and it is starting the countdown because I do have it down pretty far. But it's going to take a little bit of time and you'll see that it'll start to turn that powder into a darker color. So I'm going to go ahead and check it so you guys can see. Now I still need to leave it under there a little bit. I'm going to turn it. But do you see how it's turning dark? But this front part isn't dark so I'm going to turn it around. Because the press, because it's angled to hover it, it doesn't hover exactly like I want it to. I wish it was hovering a little more evenly, but that's okay. All we need to do is just hover this over it again, and we're going to let it darken up. You may have some stubborn parts, like right on the edges here, so you may just need to turn them all and just get it towards the back of the press, where it's going to be a lot closer to your item. So when doing it this way, I do find that turning it, rotating it, giving it a second here or there on either end really helps. 
And now that side looks pretty good and dark. So I just got to get this bottom. There's just some white still down here. So you just want everything to look nice and dark. It's basically dyeing the powder. So that's why it's really important that you do this. All right, should be good to go. It looks nice and dark everywhere. I just like to do a quick, just kind of look around, see if anything looks like it's not super dark, but everything looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the shirt over and then we're gonna place this onto our shirt and I'll show you guys what else we need to do. Now keep in mind that just like sublimation, you really can't do this on a dark shirt. However, the bonus to this is that you can do this on cotton shirts, on blend shirts, and you're gonna get super bright colors. You also don't need to place anything inside of your shirt, which I think is awesome. It's just a little bit less wasteful in my opinion because you can actually reuse the parchment paper that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out and I'm going to uh, go ahead and pre-press this because I know that this shirt has been sitting at my house for a while and probably could use a little like moisture reduction. So I just press it for a few seconds just to kind of get any moisture out of it. And I'm not sure if it'll show on camera or if it's really even moist at all. But a lot of times you'll see if you have moisture in your shirt, you'll get like a little line around your press pad. I didn't really have much in that one. So I'm not too bad. Now what I want to do is I'm going to make sure that my shirt is laid out pretty straight here. And you can do this off the press if you prefer, but I don't really mind. I like to do it on the press. And then I'm just going to pull my shirt up a little bit so that the um, collar is off. And you want to be careful not to burn yourself on your press because that can happen. And then what I'm going to do, and now I'm going to warn you, there are going to be lines on this because I still haven't quite got the printer settings down just exact yet. So I'm going to get this onto my shirt. I'm going to get it centered. Now you can use heat tape if you prefer. I'm going to go for go it this time, but you can absolutely heat tape this down. But what so you want to do is put some parchment paper over this. We're gonna heat this at 285 for 40 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this down. I'm using like a medium to firm pressure on this. And again, my Teflon sheet, I did remove it um, just because I found that it worked better without it. So definitely recommend it, but make sure that you have some sort of barrier between your shirt, your transfer and your heat source. So like a piece of parchment paper is perfect for that. I'm gonna let this finish heating up and pressing and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, once it's done, go ahead and pull this off. Now I am gonna let you know, you wanna let this cool before you remove it. Now, like I said, I am probably gonna end up with some smudging up here and some of the lines are gonna show, but I really just need to dial in my printer a little bit more. And everybody's printer is different, so you may need to do different things than I do when it comes to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat press off. I'm gonna let this cool all the way down and then I'll show you what it looks like. So once your shirt is cool to the touch, you can remove your plastic. So what I'm gonna do is just gently peel it off. And like I said, I am gonna have some lines in it and that is from my printer. It still looks pretty good though cause it's like made to look rough. So really the lines I don't think really take away from it. So this is what's left on your paper. You can see there's not much on there. But then you have this shirt that has this gorgeous print. Now like I said, I was gonna end up with a little bit of ink here this ink did not transfer. I should have seen if I could wipe that off, but I still think it looks pretty good. Now, the cool thing with this is it is ultra soft. Like it doesn't crunch when you move it. It also is stretchy, which is another really nice idea for this. And the other thing that I really like about it is that I'll show you the inside. Unlike with sublimation, where you have to worry about it transferring into the inside of your shirt, you'll note it didn't transfer inside. Now this shirt's a little thin so you can see through it, but it didn't transfer ink through it. That's just so you can see through it because the shirt's a little bit thin. This is a really comfortable way that you can do sublimation on cotton shirts without having to worry about it not lasting or looking dull. Those colors are so super bright. That black is so, so black. I think this is a really great option if you're somebody who wants to use sublimation designs on cotton because this isn't going to like wash out like it will with the sprays and things like that. I think this came out really, really nice. It was super simple to do and you only need a few supplies. Now I will say this is a little expensive to buy just off the bat, but it's gonna last you a really, really long time because you can reuse what you spill out. So don't worry about it being a little pricey 
But I just think this is such an awesome option. The other way that I kind of want to tell you, like a, a way to think about this is like using a printable HTV for lights. So like you do have a coating on this, but it's so light and soft that honestly, I don't think anyone would ever really feel it. And it is so super stretchy. I am just, I'm obsessed with this. I think this is a great option for sublimation on cotton. So what do we think of the hack? Is this something that you're gonna try? Let me know down in the comments. I personally think that I would actually choose this over doing some of the other hacks like the sprays that wash out really bad or even bleaching. I think this could be really fun, but remember you do need to do this on light colored shirts because any color of the shirt will kind of alter the color of your design. But what's great is you still could do bleaching with it as well. I did do it on a dark just so I could see kind of what it looked like. And do you see that shiny on there? That's the DTF powder that's on there. And you can see the color a little bit, but it's not, it's not okay. So just keep in mind that you do want to do this on light colors only. But the bonus to this is you can do them on full cotton shirts, blended. So you have a lot of different options and you can do lighter colors, but it might alter the color of your designs. So for example, like the flowers on this might be a little bit of a different color if this was a pink shirt or a green shirt or something like that. But don't be afraid to try it on some of your favorite shirts and see what you think. I have to say this is very comfortable. I've been wearing this all day just to see what I thought and I'm really liking it. I did wash it and it washed beautifully. I'm gonna continue to wash this just to see how it does. And if it gets really bad or something doesn't stay, I'll let you guys know. But if there's no pinned comment after a couple of months, just assume that the shirt is still in awesome shape. So if you have any questions about this or anything else that we have done here on the channel, let me know in those comments down below. Be sure that you have subscribed and hit the bell. That way it will let you know if I post any more fun videos, which you know I will. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting.